first picture might shock you. I just love Mountain Dew. Now, before you judge me, hang on for a second. I don't drink nearly as often as I used to. It's probably about one or two cans a week. And when I was in college, it was probably two or maybe even three cans a day. Mountain Dew gave me a good boost. And I still think it's the nectar of the gods. I don't like coffee. And I never have. So Mountain Dew always gave me that extra energy that I needed to get me through all the rigorous study of college and all the sleepless nights. Many need their coffee or something else to help boost their energy to get them through the day. Now, I wouldn't recommend to anyone, especially those in high school or children or even those in college, to rely so much on Mountain Dew as much as I did. Or energy drinks. I don't even know what the crave of energy drinks is now. There's certain names out there that I don't know anymore. It used to be Monster or NOS or Red Bull. Now there's tons of other ones. Or even coffee. I'm not suggesting anybody rely on any of that to get through your day and moving up in the corporate world. These drinks are just like anything else, aren't they? The world provides it. They provide a temporary fix, and eventually you need more and more of it to have the same effect. What if I told you that I have the perfect solution for a permanent energy boost? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't have to rely on anything? Just once you take this thing and it gives you a boost of energy forever. I know I've heard many people as they see a young child running around and have so much energy, they say, man, I wish I just had an ounce of that energy. Well, brothers and sisters, in fact, we actually do have that permanent energy boost right now. And it comes from the gospel that we just read from John. The gospel for our consideration today was from John chapter 4, and it began at verse 5. I'm not going to read it again. We just read it, but if you want to follow along, you can turn to your Bibles at that page, and we'll follow through that story. And I want to take you back to the verse before I read. Verse 4, which Jesus said, or which um, John wrote, now Jesus had to go through Samaria. That was the verse right before we read. There is an interesting and very specific verb choice that John uses here, saying he had to go. There was a reason Jesus went through Samaria. This wasn't a stop by accident. This wasn't a stop that most, if any of the Jews, would even make. It was Samaria, a region where the Jews do not associate themselves with any of the people there, or vice versa, the Samaritans with the Jews. But Jesus had to to stop there. He had to go there because of what was about to occur. As Jesus was traveling, he got tired, like anyone else would, and he came up to a well, so he sat down, and he didn't have anything to gather the water. And as he was sitting there, tired from the journey, he sat down to rest. The well was Jacob's well, And we're known from history that this well was about 105 feet deep. So a very deep well. And as Jesus was sitting there, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now remember, Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Nor do Samaritans associate with Jews. So you can just imagine the woman, after Jesus says something, she's wondering what's happening here. So she reminds Jesus of the custom. And after she reminds him, Jesus responds, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now remember the context. First, Jesus had to go through Samaria, where Jews do not associate. Now he's talking with a Samaritan And a woman also, nonetheless, which mostly the men and women, that was against society, who this woman, we find out later, 
didn't have the greatest reputation in Samaria. And it was the sixth hour, which means it was noon, right in the heat of the day. Most of the time, the people came to the well during the cooler part of the day, so they didn't have to make the journey when it was so hot. Jesus had to be there in Samaria at this time to meet this woman, and Jesus sparks her curiosity. Who wouldn't want a drink that you would never have to draw up again? Where you wouldn't thirst again? A drink that you wouldn't need energy from anything else ever again. And you wouldn't ever tire to obtain it ever again. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Then Jesus responds, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said, just said is quite true. This whole conversation started with Jesus being thirsty. Did you know that there is a condition that you can have in which it is impossible not to be thirsty? You'll never quench your thirst. It is called Anybody know? Polydipsia. If you have polydipsia, no matter how much water you drink, you are always thirsty. And we live in Lubbock. That would be amplified, wouldn't it? It came from taking certain medications, drinking too much alcohol, having too much salt in your diet, or too much caffeine, Mountain Dew, or from being under too much stress. Regardless, polydipsia is a physical condition in which you are always thirsty and wanting satisfaction for that thirst, but it never comes. It affects roughly 10 million Americans. The spiritual form of polydipsia, polydipsia of the soul, yes, I made that up, affects many more. How many people every day say something to the effect, well, if, if everyone else weren't so grumpy, I'd be happy. Yeah, I'd be happy if I only had a little bit more money. Um, if, if, if I had a better job, yes, then I would be much happier. Or, man, I would be able to do so much more if I didn't have a spouse or a family. Man, this world would be so much better if people just weren't so dumb. Man, the times would be so much better if this, if that, if everyone weren't against me, if I had better health, if I didn't have a past, if only had more time in each day, if only I had more say or more pull, I'd probably be happier if someone else were in charge, not that boss. I'd be definitely happier if more people would appreciate me. In other words, a lot of times we are not satisfied. You're thirsty. When was the last time you were absolutely 100% completely happy? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. The water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That sounded good to this woman because to try and satisfy her thirst for pleasure, acceptance, and love, she tried to drinking from the same water of multiple sexual relationships and from the spigot of uncommitted men which apparently didn't work the first, second, third, fourth, or even fifth time that she tried. 
Just like anyone who is looking for satisfaction from alcohol, drugs, pornography, or anything else in this world, she found that no matter how many times she tried it, it always ended up eventually leaving her thirsty again. In fact, on this day, after all those tries, she was staring at a hole in the ground looking for a drink of water in the heat of the day with no one to help her. In other words, she was thirsty, alone, and had nowhere to go. How far would you be willing to go to never feel that way again? He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. That's exactly what Jesus was asking her in verse 16. He already knew that the man she now had was not her husband, that she was living and probably having sexual relations with a man that she's not married to. He wanted to see if she would tell the truth about how she was living now. He was leading her to repentance. Here we are. This maybe it was you this morning. Here we are on another morning, on another day, a morning where we probably got an hour less of sleep because of the time change. We're tired and we're beat. We just kind of want to be lazy, relax. Probably didn't want to get up this morning, and we really don't want to strain our brains too much. And now we're at church. We're listening to God's word. We're singing psalms and hymns, and we're talking with our fellow believers. Jesus says to you today, go call your husband and come back. In other words, go and get all your secrets and bring them out. Take all the past and bring it to me. Reveal all your attempts at trying to quench your sinful nature and your sinful thirst and spew it all out in front of me. Whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst again, Jesus says. Turning to Jesus to quench your thirst will not run up empty. You will never thirst again. The prophet Isaiah says, Come, all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters. And you have, who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. You all came to the watering well of Jesus at your baptism. Jesus passed through the region of our lives because he had to. He shouldn't have to associate with anyone like us because we are sinful. But Jesus had to. It was then and there at the font that you received the gift of God as Jesus mentioned to the Samaritan woman. You received the gift of the Holy Spirit and faith at your baptism. Jesus gave you the living water. Now we drink of that living water daily as we remember our baptisms. We may not remember the exact moment because we probably were too small, but we can be reminded of what it did for us and be reminded of those who witnessed it. We turn to Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, to him who is thirsty, Jesus says. I will give to drink without cost, from the spring of the water of life. That's from John's revelation. I hear it all the time, especially when people find out that I'm not originally from Lubbock. Make sure you drink plenty of water. It doesn't take long for the dry heat to parch anyone physically. It also doesn't take long for any of us to become parched spiritually. We need our spiritual water. Jesus gives us living water. 
He gives us his living water and his word and in his sacraments. And may we daily, regularly, consistently, more and more, drink from Jesus' well, which fills our soul. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.